so welcome back um, let's get on with it so the stress can also trigger anxiety disorders when an individual child is stressed when the mother is over controlling and stop them from going out there to play for a very long time and the time comes for them to sort of move out to do their own thing it becomes stressful for them because they are not used to it they are being controlled for a long they or they have been controlled for a long period of time they were trying to be adventurous but they were stopped they were trying to explore and exploit they were stopped so they don't have that confidence and that is exactly what we are talking about that brings on the childhood anxiety disorder so let's carry on with where we are children and adolescents with anxiety disorders have an increased physical and psychological reaction to stress so it, it, it's it's self-explanatory you know children with that disorder have a physical an increased physical and psychological reaction to stress so whenever they are faced with maybe impending examination whenever they are faced with maybe um, going to uh, going for lunch with the rest of the kids whenever they are faced with um, visiting friends whenever they are faced with going to the shops whenever they are faced with mathematics classes or topics that are going to be treated they start exhibiting that trait psychological trait of stress their reaction to danger and even if it is a small one is quicker and stronger so it means when they are in that variable situation it's very difficult for you to handle them because it is internalized and if you don't take care you can't pick up on that and you can't support and help the child unless you are able to diffuse that by communicating with them properly and professionally that's why most of the times it needs a professional support if it gets to that clinical stage so you see when they are in that situation of increased physical and psychological anxiety stress or disorder which means they have crossed that boundary of being a normal stress which is usually um, daily on everybody's life but when it becomes excessive when it becomes uncontrollable when it becomes very edgy when it is continuous when it is possessive and obsessive when it cuts and, and sort of take up all your mindset then it goes into the clinical area so we have to be very um, conscious about this so that we can help our kids who are exhibiting few traits of these um, anxiety disorders but let me remind you that it won't become a disorder yet if it's not persistent if it's not excessive it is if it's not consistent if it's not worrying so we call it anxiety we call it stress but if it becomes clinical then we can dab it or caption it or name it as a disorder so let's carry on from here many of the same anxiety disorders that affect adults affect children as well but you know um, parents of this day and age sometimes due to maybe lack of research or you just don't know it instead of you maybe seeking professional advice or you going in and research yourself and get some facts for your child so that you can support her or him you refuse to be very complacent so any disorder that affects adults definitely affects children so we have we as parents need to be very 
um, conscious about this so that we can help our kids when we pick up on all these stresses or all these pointers that affect their daily lives. So, a common anxiety disorder in children is school phobia. That is common. <laughs> it is common. You know, it is very common, school phobia. As they are going to school next week, on the 7th, as most of the schools are reopening and going back. And with this critical situation of COVID-19 that we are in at the moment, myself as a parent, I am in that phobia as well because I'm thinking that, you know, what protocols, what measures have the government put in place they will come up with all these pointers that they've put in place, these sort of measures that will help our children. But as a parent, you don't have that full confidence because that disease is dangerous. So as well as our children are also going through that school phobia, they are also thinking about the disease as well. So everybody is stressed out. But not until it's persistent and excessive and uncontrollable and it's not really giving you any peace of mind. That is when it goes beyond the normal stage or situation and it becomes a disorder. But at the moment, everybody is anxious and stressed about going back to school. The kids, especially, school phobia is everywhere. It's not that they don't want to go, but it, there's some kind of fear of going back to school to meet friends and all that. Some, some are happy going back, but most higher percentage are having this phobia, school phobia. So as I was saying, because of this COVID-19, even parents are having the stressful time of thinking about what measures have they put in place. Because you don't want your kid to go in there with key workers, with key worker kids that are also coming to school. You don't know who has got, or who is asymptomatic, or who has got what, and then your kid come back from school with something that is going to affect the whole family. So everybody is stressful. So we as parents are embarking on the, um, the government. We are pleading with them so that they put in stringent protocols that will really go a long way um, to help our kids from contracting that deadly disease. That's all we are asking for because we are not comfortable with them going back. But we have no choice. And it is even said that if you let your kid stay at home, you're going to be fined. So it's a catch-22 catch situation. You know, when you don't allow a kid to go, you'll be fined. And when they go to, there's a risk. Let's say an optimal risk of contracting the disease because everybody is coming from everywhere and you don't know who has got it. So the school phobia is also stressing our kids of this day and age. Let's carry on. Which in some cases can be a type of separation anxiety because they are going away from their parents, their mom, their dad, and some of their siblings. So it can be termed as a separation anxiety disorder because they'll be going away for some hours long hours like eight or nine hours before they get back home some go on buses and some also um, are driven to school so it's a kind of a long um, long shot in terms of trying to work out who and what is happening around us sometimes anxiety has no obvious cause it just happens and naturally, we have that tendency to be anxious. But then, when it's persistent and excessive and increased in that sort of threshold, then it becomes a disorder, which means you need to seek a professional support or help. So, in other instances, the child may experience bullying from classmate or even a teacher. So that worsens the case because as a teacher, you are there to support that child. You are not there to add any stress or any kind of anxiety to that child. 
So if the child is experiencing some kind of bullying, 